to Linear Rock. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. It's great to see you. <laughs> so great to have you. So you're a timeless, you know, class act, extraordinary singer, uh, a man with a great story who delivers, always delivers good vibes. Uh, and this song with, that we just heard is a good example. Um, Mr. Joseph Williams, 40 years of career with Toto and beyond. And you're here presenting uh, your new solo record, which is called Dennis and Tenant, and which will be released on February 26, uh, the same day as Steve Lukather's I Found the Sun Again, his new solo record. So same date, same label, same type of cover, same team, basically. But what makes your record unique, which is, you know, the Joseph Williams signature and big shot? Well, first of all, it's a joy to be here with you. Thank you for having me and uh, and to speak to all, everybody. Um, these albums were, were made um, dip separately from, from one another is, is really what happened. Steve made his album in the beginning of 2020. Uh, he had always planned on doing that. And my album was, uh, I started working on it in pieces back in 2016. And then in 2020, I really spent the majority of my time finish, finishing the, the, the album there. But they were meant to be sort of separate projects. It was only when I became involved with Steve's uh, record company, record label, that we came up with the idea of putting the whole thing together. Since we knew there was going to be no new Toto album for fans, we thought, what if we put them together and that way, you know, all the fans can have something that it's kind of like new Toto, but not, you know. So this record, as we heard, you, you presented it with um, the first single, Never So You Come In, that we just heard, which is classic Joseph Williams, but with a modern taste. Uh, it's actually uh, since 2008 that uh, you don't have solo music coming out as Joseph Williams. Have you been collecting the songs um, through the years or it's just pretty much, as you said, fresh material from 2016? And do you compose any differently when it's for Toto or for yourself? Um, y yes to all of those questions. That's <laughs> yeah, th that's really the answer. Um, um, I uh, yeah, the last album I did was in was in 2008, and then in 2010 I came back with Toto and we started to tour again. And I didn't wasn't writing anything for a solo album until 2016. I started to work with an old friend of mine, Barry Bregman, and we started to develop a song here and there for a possible album down the line. I, I wasn't even sure when I was going to do anything. Uh, it was. In 2020, when I really sat down and said, "Okay, I'm going to do this album and finish it," you know, completely. So, uh, uh, but the, the, the few of the songs that are on the album were, were the beginning of the writing process began as far back as 2016. But, but uh, I wasn't writing all along. I was I was spending my time focused on touring. It's got a modern taste, by the way. It's classic, but with modern taste. Is that actually? What, where you are at, you know, now at the moment? Well, um, it's it's really just a, a, a product of. Oh, here's my cat. <laughs> my cat okay, everybody. what's the name of the cat? And the cat's name is Jojo Bean. My daughter's named the, the cat. I did not okay. name. Okay, and today is Cat Day, so. It, it, is it really? Happy, <laughs> yeah, Happy Cat Day, Jojo. <laughs> Jojo. So um, anyway. Uh, the 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 song um and the album in general um it was the f it was the first time that i had the means to be able to 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 update my studio in a long long time and so i think that the quality of the of the sounds and the quality of my engineering uh, i've learned how to be, become a good better engineer over the years and uh, i think those are the reasons why it maybe sounds a little bit more modern than anything i had done before and also i spent a little bit more time on this one and just you know make, tried to make it a little bit a little bit more special and and uh and and with the and with updated equipment and just with today's technology it just sounds better just the quality is better so you said that you worked separately on the two records and that yours came along after but um, working in the same period of time, let's say, in the studio for you and Steve, it felt maybe like working not on one, but two Toto albums in one year, you know, at the same time, some way. 
that's, 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 <laughs> I think that's kind of accurate in a way. Uh, you know, Steve Lukather's album fe felt, I guess, left like a Toto album because he he had a, a separate group of musicians who were all in the studio at the same time, recording each song one at a time, uh, very much like a different band. And so that that was not very Toto-ish. But D David was in the studio, also part of that band. Yeah. And I was also in the studio, you know, just sort of assisting with vocals and stuff like that and, and some of the songs um, co-writes. Co but, but that album of Luke, there's is very not Toto. It's very different. My, my album is probably closer to Toto because uh, it's exactly the way I would have produced a Toto record. It's just you, it's just it would have had more Luke and Paige and the other guys on it. That's really the difference. Both of you and Steve um, have chosen to include cover songs in the record. Uh, did you plan that as well? I mean, since you have compatible taste, uh, did you argue maybe on who had to pick what? And since, you know, Steve uh, is also collaborating to If I Fell of the Beatles that you did. So how did it work, actually? It's a combination that you both have cover songs. No, no, we, it wasn't. It wasn't thought out at all like that. For Steve had his ideas of songs that he wanted to do cover songs. My, the songs that I chose for my album were completely by accident. It was by accident. I was working on my album over here with this screen and my keyboards, and and I take a break and I go over here and watch some YouTube or something. And while I was watching YouTube, the the video for for the Peter Gabriel song came up, and I watched it. And it reminded me how great it was. I love the song and I love uh, Kate Bush. The performance is so great. And after I watched it, I turned over here to my this where the keyboard and this screen and I started to play the changes and sing it with my mic, which is right here. And I just and I and then I just got carried away. I hit record and I just started to play it. And that was literally how I picked that song to cover it. And the same thing is true for the Beatles song. I was taking a break and I chose it that way. It was only later on when I finished all of the vocals that I thought, hmm, maybe if I put Luke on this, it might be a nice idea. It was all later. Okay. What's behind the title of the record? This seems, you know, two words that have the same meaning. It's like, you know, getting stronger. Is it about yourself? Well, no, the, the song, well, the song, it is kind of about myself, but the song I, I was written, I co-wrote the song with a guy named Steve Overton, who's, who's a wonderful writer. And he's very smart and he's, he's very funny. And he's, his, his sense of humor is very, um, uh, very uh, acerbic is the word we, we use here. So the song, the lyrics that he wrote, his original title was something different. But the original lyrics that what it's a song is sort of about in his style of writing is about a bad breakup roommate situation. Somebody, okay. somebody who has stayed around too long. Okay. Because, because denizen and tenant mean the same thing. Yeah. So, so a Dennis and Tenet also is like some, but like the guy who's at your party at four in the morning, and it's like, God, <laughs> you got to go home, you know, it's time to go home. So that's what it, it's a tenant, it's a tw tw two times, you know, yeah. Dennis, Tenet, it's, it's too, you know, you have to go home now. That's that's the that's that's that person, and so I love that idea for a title because. Back when I was a younger man, I, that was me. I was the Dennis and Tenet of Toto. Okay. Uh, the guys <laughs> always have to tell me, Joe, go home. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Vitale, a listener, is asking if there was any healthy competition between between you and Steve, and also with Toto, since you were, you know, working. And usually, you know, when you're you're working on solo music, uh, is there any jealousy, you know, from the others, or like saying, you know, maybe this song you could have saved for the band or something like that? Is that happened? <laughs> Maybe in the past, but not now, not anymore. You know what I mean? Not not anymore. Also, you know, the the future of Toto after 2019 was was very uncertain. We you know weren't sure what was going to happen. So uh, you know, when Luke, when Steve made his album and I made my album, it was very much separate. He made his at the beginning of the year. I made mine during most of the summer. 
And uh, it was only later that we put them together, you know, yeah. as, as that kind of a thing. So there was no real competition, you know, going on, and, and you know. But n now, if we do it, if we do this again, there might be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any mistake that you made uh, that became a sort of lesson in your life? And what makes you feel like a liberty man today? Which is the song that we are going to play now. Uh, I think the biggest mistake that um, that I made is 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 paying too much paying not enough attention to to uh, the work that it takes to take care of one's instrument, okay. uh, the focus that it takes to to. Um, to to take care of your career and 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 you know the, like if if you find if you're lucky enough to find a job that you love, uh, my, the mistake that I made as a, as a younger adult was to not take it seriously enough, and then later on in life I became I I gained more and more respect for my own career if that makes any more sense that's that's the best way to put it so it's just you know I, you know and, and it's also very typical of young youth to 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 uh you know to to sort of be that way but that 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 would be the only regret is just that i you know i could have focused better on my career sooner paulina from poland ciao and then we have federica elton Monia, Domenico, Roberto, Carlo, a lot of people here. And Luca is asking about David Page. So he's asking, is, it, is he in good health? Uh, give us news. How does he feel? Is he okay? David, David is doing really well. David is doing great, fantastic. And, and, the, and David is working on new music. I'm working with him right now. On uh, on a few new pieces for Dave's new project. So keep your eyes open for something of new solo music from David Page coming up. He Dave is doing really really well. Great! In the video we saw also you have a dog. So we saw Jojo the cat. And what's the name of the dog? That dog's name is Polly. Polly. Okay. Is Polly. it your dog? That's my dog. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Joseph, how many hours a day do you now? dedicate to music and maybe other forms of art how do you express yourself you know apart from music especially when you stay home and since you had a lot of months to stay home a lot you've been busy with your solo record but i'm sure you had also time to relax well i i'm i i stay very very busy i keep myself busy i have to for my brain i have to keep working um uh, I've been making these videos also my the videos for my songs I've been making them myself and learning how to learning how to edit film and and do all of that I uh, just because I want to work and keep my mind busy so I've, I've I've taught myself how to do that and and just you know made these videos which is a fun to do and a joy to do so I'm working on either music or something right now I'm working on new music with David for with David Page so that's kind of what's on my on my slate for today but I, I i put in at least you know five or six hours a day but when i'm working like on a video like on the on the wilma fingadu video i i worked you know for four days like for 15 hours a day wow you said before that uh you learned how to cure your voice and to preserve it through the years but is you know how and eventually why has singing changed you know its meaning during your career is still you know the same emotion or it developed in a sense and now it's um something more maybe or or i don't know or maybe more a job or less a job what would you say well it's 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 always been a, a part job part just loving to do it um uh and, and in other words um you know i started my career doing you know Vo voiceovers and 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 singing in studios for television commercials and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I found that obviously a lot of fun. And then I and then I started to work on stage and doing all of that stuff and of course that is a lot of fun. But when you go out on tour, it's a lot of work too. You know what I mean yeah. when you when you so so yeah, it is work to keep your voice up and everything. But when but when I'm home, 
and I'm not working on music, I'm still walking around the house singing all the time. <laughs> So from the time I was a little kid until now, I'm still just I still sing because it's a joy to do that. It's just to me, it's just a joy. I'm always making songs about everything I do. I'll, always, you know. I was just that was the way my mother was, you know, when when I was little. You know, she everything. I need a glass of water. You know, she would just you know <laughs> everything was was singing. Singing. Yeah. So so I still feel that way about it. It's not work. It's 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 a joy to do, you know, but but it, it took me till I was much more mature to understand that it takes work to maintain the instrument so that when you go on the road, it sounds good. And also, you know, it, it's it's an easier to do the work. It's easier to do the job if you just take care of yourself. Sure. It's It's very simple, actually. It's not that hard to do. So um, and, and so when when those two things came together, it, yeah, later on it, it became it becomes more of a joy all the time and less work. Okay, you did uh, one of the first talent shows ever back in 1983, and by the way, you did not win. But <laughs> do you consider that experience, you know, at Star Search as part of your artistic path? And what do you think, you know, of nowadays Stalin shows, which are a little different because you already had a solo record when you participated to that show, if I'm correct. I did. Um, my career was very interesting, you know, when I start, first started out. I did the first solo record and, and we I didn't really have a, a, an easy time getting a record company to want to put it out. So we sort of eventually put it out with, uh, with MCA records. And, and, uh, and then I got a job in, in a show in Las Vegas working in this show where I was imitating other singers. And, and, uh, and it was a great show and a great way to train to be on stage. And, and and sing live and all of that and then you know the uh, uh, the producers of star search uh, came up and watched the show and found uh, one of one of the girls in our show went on star search and actually won that year her name was Monica I forget what her last name was but while they were there they asked me if I wanted to come on also and I said no the first time and then <laughs> And then they came back a month later and they asked me if again or a month or so later and they asked me if I wanted to go again. And I said, okay. And so uh, it, it was it was number one. It was a reason to get back to L.A. from the Vegas show. Uh -huh. It was it, it was like it was it, it was a job in TV. That was the way I looked at it. Uh -huh. and, and it was work back in L.A. That was one another way. That was the other thing I looked at it. I, I wasn't even really thinking about like 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 winning to be honest with you i was so happy to just go in there and like you know get a paycheck to go on tv and do that and the fact that i was lucky enough to to win a few times so that i was i could i could, i was on the show i think five times you know what i mean in, in total uh uh was enough to just what it did do is it gave me confidence okay So it, it gave me a lot more confidence, e even though looking back on that stuff now makes me want to makes me want to like, you know, go into a corner and scream. My 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 daughters, my daughters love to bring that out and show it to me when when they when I start to act like, you know, the embarrassing to them. They go, here, here let me show you something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's it's it looks it looks funny now but at the time it, it helped me a great deal to give me confidence sure compared to the new talent shows it's very different by the way now what do you think and do you think it's useful you know now as an experience or uh, as it was for you back then Well, uh, you know, the, 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 the star search was 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 different in that, you know, they, they there, there were the people, the judges were 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 record executives, mostly they were they were not they were not personalities. And the, yeah. the, the talent shows these days are not about the talent. They're about the judges. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Okay, that they're, they're about the personalities of the judges. It's true. It's, it's not about the talent. It's not. I mean, it really isn't. They have teams and they're training them and blah, blah, blah. It's about it's about the judges. Star Search, the judges were just these nerdy record people who would go, yeah, I give them a three and yeah, I give them a four. It was about the people. It was about the talent, you know, so that's the difference between that show and, and the ones now. 
being the son of a big artist, your father John Williams, which was orchestra director and composer who also worked with Steven Spielberg, has given you something more like an extra edge or it was tough as hell, you know, having his name and being involved in music? Extra edge, always the extra edge, always, always been a help and a support all, always along the way. Uh, the only negativity I've ever experienced is from the outside. Okay. You know what I mean? All, that's the only time. And the only time I ever experienced any negativity at all was when I was, tr when I was working as a television composer. When I was working as a, as a film, you know, composer, TV composer, because I'm not, I didn't train the way he did. I don't have the skills that he does. Uh -huh. So, so I was doing my, I was the work I was doing was on a much different level than he he was. So people would, I, I would get comparisons, and you know, from time to time, but I didn't pay attention. And and he's always been my advisor. He's always been my best teacher. He's always been my best fan. He's, you know, he's he's. You know, so so uh, yeah, that's you know. There you go. Okay, as you said, uh, "Don't Give Up" by Peter Gabriel and uh, Kate Bush is a cover that you decided last minute to make, and is a duet with your daughter Anna. Uh, impressive one, I must say. And the, the new single "Vilma Fingadu" is dedicated to your mother, who died very young. Why now? Um, you decided, you know, to um, have your daughter on your record and to dedicate a song to your mother. You know, the whole record sounds uh, filled with emotion, very personal, in the mood. Uh, so maybe that's the reason why it's the perfect timing to do such a thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, all all of those things are true, and also the timing just all kind of worked out. O on all of the solo albums that I've done, I try to have one dedication, one song or a poem or something to my mother, mm -hmm. you know, who died when I was a kid. And uh, and so Wilma Fingadu is that song on this album. It's that dedication, and and it's probably the 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 most it's the biggest one of all the ones that I've done. And 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 the, my daughter's Hannah. My daughter Hannah is now 25, and she's and she has become a beautiful, wonderful singer. And she's a incredible professional in the studio on the on the on the mic and and uh, uh, just you know and and just be beautiful girl. And she also looks incredibly like my mother. Oh wow! And so and so just having her involvement and the and my other daughter was also <clears throat> singing on the song but did not want to be in the video. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but, she's uh, shy. <laughs> yes, yeah, just she's got she 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 marches to a different tune, but okay. uh, but she's also just as great a singer and uh, and and great in the studio, but so timing, it was just the time was right. The song was the right timing. Hannah was was willing to be on camera, and she's, you know, um, uh, she just had a baby. So I'm a I'm a I'm new grandfather also. Oh wow! Congratulations about Thank that. You. So do you remember Joseph the feeling uh, that you had the very first time you received the call, you know, to join Toto? I mean, Toto is a big family but they're also all phenomenal musicians. You know, such an immense talent within one family, let's say. Was it some way intimidating for you at first, you know, for both reasons, being that, you know, such good musicians and the family? Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I knew some of them. I had met, you know, Luke and I, I think I knew the, the best. Uh, I had met him and knew him a few times when I was a teenager. And then he played on my solo album when I was 20, when we were recording. Uh, so I knew Luke. And I, and I had met the Procaros a couple of times in different scenarios. And also Paige a couple of times, many times actually, because my father and his father had worked together. But, but only a few times. And I had never met them as a group. And also I was a huge fan, huge oh, wow. fan of the, of the band. So I was in, incredibly intimidated, incredibly. The other thing was was that the the group that group of guys had such a had such a chemistry with themselves that that it, it took a long time to crack my way into the to that they, they it was you know they had a thing, yeah. and uh, it was really intimidating at first. <laughs> it, it was it was scary. 
But then you made it brilliantly. <laughs> I did. I did what I could. <laughs> Which is the most underrated song on the three albums that you recorded with Toto, in your opinion? Well, if I had to pick one of, if I had to pick one of mine, mm -hmm. it would be th uh, a thousand years. I would say. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, I I I always thought that that was um, a good one. <laughs> okay. Um, but but it it it, it was it was it, it, that song was way more my like my solo album type of material if you think okay. about it if you go back and listen to it now that song would fit on this album oh right really, really That's well point. actually um so it maybe the timing wasn't perfect for that one but i i always loved that tune and um but there were others. I mean, it's hard to pick. It's hard. Those kinds of questions are hard to answer when you have to like pick one song that's like <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But if I had to pick one of mine off of mm -hmm. those albums, it would be it would be either that or it would be Till the End. Okay, it's from Fahrenheit. From, from okay. the Fahrenheit album. Yeah. I would say, okay. I would say I would say that one. I would I felt was like underrated a little bit. I thought I thought we had a good shot at a great Toto song. There. Okay, another of those pick one song question. Um, uh, among all Toto classics, which one do you think that belongs to you the most and why? You know, the song that you wish you were there writing it. Maybe it's easier for you because it's somebody else's song, not yours. So I hope you can give me an answer to that. Boy, that, that's, that's a tough one because, uh, um, you know, I, it's, I, I would never want to presume myself into any of that work because it's so brilliant in, in and of itself. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it would be difficult for me to presume myself into any of it. But what I can tell you mm -hmm. is, that, is that of the three big hits, Hold the Line, Rosanna, and Africa, mm -hmm. that, that for me, Rosanna was always, the one, was always my favorite one. Okay. I'll, I'll leave it at, at that. <laughs> okay, you always come back because music is like oxygen for you know, people like you guys. Uh, you announced the Dogs of Odds tour featuring, you know, just you and Steve. Then we had the pandemic. But since it seems that we've been, you know, we have an extra time. And since you said that David is feeling good now, what will happen, you know, to Toto uh, in the Toto camp? Uh, post vaccine how do you do you envision it uh, maybe somebody else will come back maybe we will have lavara opening the shows what can you predict um my prediction is that is that uh, you know with as far as david page goes he's 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 doing you know fantastic but he he he's uh, he's finished doing the 12 hour bus trips okay. on our tours when we travel to europe and we spend 6 7 8 weeks traveling around Europe in a bus and we, and we go from gig we do a gig and then we and then we're on the bus for 12 hours or or 7 hours you know to the next city or whatever or four or whatever that's 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 hard on him. he can't do that anymore yeah so he, even though he's in great shape and he's at home and, and he's doing great and he's making music and everything it's like th those days are just done for him and and then and then the the other members who are still alive and still you know uh, able don't want to come anymore. Okay. Okay. And and then and then the the members who are alive that are are, are just simply just not able anymore to perform. Okay. But everybody's still, you know, not uh, nobody's enemies. All right. But but the, so so Luke and I are we call it the dogs of Oz because we're the only two dogs left. That are willing to tour, you know, that okay. can still tour. That's what it means, really. And so uh, that's all. So it, it, in terms of the future of touring, who knows what will happen? I mean, you know, Jeff Picaro could come back to life. But if, you know, if, if the earth keeps turning and, and going around the way it looks right now, Luke and I are the ones that are going to be touring because we can because we're and we also want to. Yeah. So that's that's you know that's the best answer I can give you. And then and in terms of the future of like new Toto music, like coming out, you're always going to have new material and 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 uh, um, content from me. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to have me pushing those guys to come up with and do new content also. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know so 
as long as I'm breathing, you, there will be some something new. So, Joseph, now we're closing this great interview. By the way, you're such a beautiful person as I expected you to be. So thank you very, very much for this interview. Um, My pleasure. We're, we're closing, you know, with that special funny video, the Africa lockdown version. Uh, what's the spark behind, you know, that video? It's, you know, simply having a great time at home and taking out the frustration of this no touring, you know, forced situation or how did it came along? That's that's exactly what it was. We you know that the pandemic was was it was the, it was the first lockdown where yeah. and, and and in California it was very serious and there was nobody on the streets and you know you remember we you know that very first lockdown. Yeah. And 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 Luke and Steve Luke there you know we, I was up at his house and we were thinking like you know what can we do is there something we can do you know and and I thought like you know I, I was working on my album and I had I had all my gear and everything was up and running and everything and so I said let me let me do a version of Africa. Let me just do a whole version just for fun. And, and like, I'll come up to the house and record you and, and I'll get Lenny, you know, to, to, to do, to get percussions. And I just, that, that and Luke's like, okay, great. I'll, we'll do that. Let me find out if it's okay with Dave. And, and so everything, everybody was fine with it. And we just did it really quick. And I did it on an iPhone, the whole thing. And, <laughs> and, 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 and you could see me in my apartment. It was, that was when I was working on my, on my album. And I, and I was just in, you know, in stuck at home, you know, working on my album, eating the black until I was, you know, huge. And, and, uh, it's exactly what it was. And, and it's funny to look back on it now because it, it's, it's, it, it definitely like will mark the time. Of, of that first lockdown, you know, it's the yeah. crazy, that crazy feeling we had in, the, in, in our heads. And by the way, it's like the best way to celebrate three billion streams of Africa. And uh, so that's a great way, you know, to do that it's fantastic video. So we're going to watch it now. We thank you very much, Joseph, for your time. It's and my pleasure. Good luck thank for the you. album. And we hope to see you soon in Italy. Thank you. I hope to see you guys soon. We can't wait to get back there. Thank you so much. Take care. Ciao, Joseph. Take care, you too. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.